In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to copy a toolpath and the toolpath that I want to copy is the contour going around the outside. Okay, so just ensure that you just have uh, highlighted or selected the toolpath that you want to copy. So in this particular case I'm just going to copy the contour. Right click on it here, um, on the name, and drag your mouse down. So just dragging it down below the little red arrow and release and then say copy after. So basically this contour and this contour are copies of each other. Okay, so now I need to edit this particular toolpath. And what I want to do is I want to make it into a finished toolpath. So I'm expanding it and hitting my parameters. And first of all, if I go to the tool page and I'm just going to change rough to finish. The advantage of copying a toolpath means that all the tool numbers, my speeds and feeds, if I have coolant on, will all remain the same. Okay, so I'm going to go to my cut parameters. So the stock to leave on the walls in this case is going to be zero. And um, what I'm going to do here is change my compensation type now to being in the control. So essentially I can modify the size of the block on the machine by changing the radius value of the cutter on the actual control of the machine. Okay, everything else is going to leave the same, so just green tick on that. I've got a warning here coming up to say that at the moment there's a gouge check on my lead in and my lead out, and this won't work with cutter compensation in the control, so I can accept that. Um, and I'm going to regenerate the toolpath. Okay, so what's the difference then between the tool toolpaths? So if I have only displayed the selected toolpaths on, this is the first toolpath, which is a roughing toolpath with compensation applied on the computer. And if I click on this one, you'll see that this is a finished toolpath with compensation applied in the control of the machine. Um, so the first thing to note is obviously there's only 0.6 of a difference in the toolpaths. But what's happening here is that Mastercam is actually outputting the center line of the cutter 8 millimeters plus the 0.6 millimeters from the edge of the geometry. So just if I was to zoom in on there, if you were to look down here, okay, you'll see that I am at 8.6005 so that this line has been off, offset 8.6 millimeters from that line there. If I go to the second toolpath where compensation is applied in the control, you can see here that the blue line is actually going right on top of the geometry, okay? That's leaving stock to be left on of zero. If I was to regenerate that operation, we see a purple line. So what the purple line is the predicted path of the center line of the tool if the tool is exactly eight millimeters radius value. The tool will be on center at this point of the lead in and the lead out. And that as it travels along the first line, it will offset by the radius value of the tool stored in the controller. So the first thing to note then is that it's essential that the length of this line has to be longer than the radius value of the tool stored in the controller. So it needs to be eight millimeters or greater. Now often when I'm machining, what I do is I actually deliberately call the cutter slightly bigger, so maybe 8.3 millimeters, um, so that I can basically do a sort of semi-finish pass around the outside of the block, measure it, and then actually adjust the cutter by the exact uh, amount so that I end up with the right size block. Okay, if I was to back plot this operation, then you'll see that as the cutter is on center um, of the tool path, and now as it travels along the length of the line, it, applying its cutter compensation. So this is where it applies the comp, and then we'll essentially run around the outside of the block. 